episode 9 of My Doll's House Diary. Now in this episode I'm going to be moving away from the kitchen and making a start stripping back the rest of the rooms, taking them right back to the bare wood. Now when I had a look inside the doll's house this morning, just really to sort of plan out the episode and where I wanted to start, I felt a little bit sad thinking that by the end of the day all of this will be gone. It's been like this now for almost 19 years and I put an awful lot of time and effort into getting it to this stage. But with it looking like this, I really don't feel motivated to continue with it, so I know it needs to be done. And I'm mentioning this just in case anybody else feels the same way. You might have started at Old's House a few years ago and you're just coming back to it now, but feel that you can't strip it back because of the time and effort you put into it. But I would say if you don't feel happy with it now, you never will, and you won't be able to find the motivation to keep going with it. So the best thing to do is just put it down to experience and remember what you learned along the way. I mean, I certainly learned a lot from decorating my doll's house. For example, if you are going to use the same wooden components throughout the house, skirting, coving, panelling, that type of thing, then if your budget allows, buy it all in one go. Or check with the supplier that they have plenty in stock and it's not a line that's about to be discontinued. I found that with my coving. I just um, bought sort of four or five strips at a fair and then I couldn't find anything to match it, so I had to sort of start again. And the same thing as well with wallpaper. Always buy enough to do the room, and probably an extra sheet as well, just in case of mistakes. You can always use the paper that's left over for other projects, smaller displays or room boxes, or for miniatures. And that's just in case when you repeat order, it's not exactly the same shade, and I've had that before as well. Now, if you have any really good tips for sort of general doll's house construction or decorating, do pop them in the comments below. Um, I'd love to hear them and I'm sure everybody else would as well. OK, well, without further ado, let's get started. OK, so I'm going to be leaving this right hand attic as it is, but that's the only room I will be leaving. But I want to empty everything out, so I've got this box here. And I'm just going to pop everything inside and then put that somewhere safe until I want it again. And that's just because I don't want anything sort of crashing around while I'm working on it. furniture I ever made and the reason I started making doll's house furniture was because I was looking for um, a wardrobe with a flat top so that I could put suitcases on top of it and I just couldn't find one this is we're talking 19 years ago and I could only find um, wardrobes with like the rounded top sort of like the Victorian style wardrobes. So I decided I'd have a go and make one myself and I copied this from a Laura Ashley um, catalogue. And I'm really glad now that I couldn't find a suitable wardrobe or I may never have started making Doll's House furniture. So it's a good thing really. down as I'm working on the rest of the doll's house and I'm just going to remove this right hand door as well just to get it out of my way and I've got my little pot here with all the other screws from the other hinge so I'll add these to those Door off, and I'll add 
put that down there with the other one. And they'll need stripping as well, but I'll come back to that once I've done the actual doll's house. And I'm actually going to remove this part of the hinge as well, because I'll need to to get rid of the wallpaper in these rooms. And for some reason, I've got different types of screws in there. Get my bullet screwdriver. Final one. And I may even replace these hinges. They're starting to rust actually, and they've got paint and things on them. But I'll put it somewhere safe for now. And then once the doors go back on, I can make a decision on that. Pop that down there. And I'm going to keep these screws in that room because I'm not doing anything in there. They'll be safe in there. Okay, I think I'm going to make a start on what used to be the living room. And I'm actually just going to start off with a flathead screwdriver as well and just sort of ease it behind um, the panelling and start working that off. So I'll move the camera in a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. Right, on top of the fireplace there I've got the light fitting, but I'll probably be changing those as well. So I'll just put that somewhere for now. And I've got the smallest flathead screwdriver here. And actually what I want to do first of all is see if I can remove this um, fireplace surround in one piece. I may not be keeping the surrounds, but I would like to try and um, salvage them if I can. So there's a little bit of a gap around there. Heard a creak. So I'm just sort of, I've made a gap and I'm just easing the screwdriver behind. get in your way for a moment. Oh, I'm so pleased that I've managed to get that off in one piece. A bit of the sort of paper stuck around the edge. But I'm hoping these can find a new home. I really should have got another box and I can put all of these inside. So let me go and do that. I'd also like to get this hearth up in one piece, if I can, but I'm not as hopeful just because it's not really... Oh, that's a shame. There's nowhere really to sort of get the screwdriver in. And these are actually made um, of plaster. I must admit, I do still feel a little bit sad about it. But it's got to be done. Right, so I've got a nice bit of gap in here at the edge of the panelling, so I'm going to go in there. Oh, that's nice. That's quite satisfying, isn't it, when it comes off in one big piece. And I should be lining all these walls again, as I did for the kitchen. And I'm sort of thinking about having 
more paint in the rooms and maybe just a couple of feature walls. No, I'm going to come away with sore fingers this evening. Probably lots of little cuts and scrapes as well. I think the thing to do is just take your time, be patient. Start sort of getting tired or frustrated with it, take a break, go and have a cup of tea or coffee and then come back to it. Okay, so the back um, under there in the back wall is going to be a little bit more difficult. So I think I'm going to start around this side now. So I'll just move you around. Again, I've got some nice sort of gap in there my screwdriver behind. Oops, I didn't mean to do that because I just sort of made a bit of a dent there in the actual wall. I wasn't thinking there. I'm going to be replacing all of the doors as well. So as I did with the kitchen, I'm going to remove the whole of the door, including the surround. door out first. I keep um, hitting the beams in the kitchen below. I think I've just loosened one. Let's be careful of that. Ah, there we go. Always as well be aware of where your fingers and hands are in relation to your screwdriver or whatever you're using. My plan is to sort of clear out the rooms first and leave the wallpaper until last and then sort of remove all the wallpaper at the same time. Told you didn't I, little cuts and things. The first knuckle cut. I think as well one comfort um, in sort of doing this is knowing that you've all seen it as it was so you know it hasn't just sort of been wasted you all saw what it was like before and you're following me on this journey which does mean a lot to me I still keep getting hold of that beam in the kitchen I've got to stop doing that it's quite difficult as well working because I'm sort of working around the camera If I can maybe get this panel off, I can get into this surround from that other side. Ooh. holding on to the back of the doll's house as I do this. Stop it from moving around. Try 
and go in straighter with the screwdriver so I'm not sort of making little jab marks in the walls. But if I do, I can always sort of go round and fill them. There, looks a mess, doesn't it? <laughs> so if I can get behind this piece of skirting. around. I was wondering where that red paint had come from but it's not, it's blood off my knuckle. Always be careful when you're sort of doing something to ward yourself like this. So I'm well out of the way now. Just trying to see if I can get a little gap, get a part of it behind there. I think some of those sort of shards of wood that are still sticking on there maybe be easier to get off once I've removed the floorboards. So I can come back to those. But what I don't like doing is sort of what I've just been doing, flitting from one thing to another. I really wanted to work more sort of routinely. I think if you watched my um, kitchen episode, you'll remember I had to bring in my saw to get that um, left hand door surround piece off. So I think I'm going to do that again with that one. I can't just can't seem to get the um, screwdriver tip in anywhere. It's so sort of tightly glued. And I'll just go and sort out my knuckle as well. Back in a mo. Okay, so I've got my smaller razor saw here. I'm going to have a go at removing that surround. So again, I might have more joy with that sort of bottom piece um, once these floorboards are out. I just realised there's a, a nail sticking up there from the door. I'll get my pliers and get that out. I'm just going to clear some of this away. seems to be coming off nice and easy anyway. Oops. I forgot about the copper wire there. Okay. Let's 
rip that paper. I'm just going to remove the little plug there, which was for the fire. I'll put that in that box with the fireplace. And that came out so much easier than I thought. Again, I'll probably salvage this piece of wood to reuse for the chimney breast because I like the size of these. It's slightly narrower than the kitchen. So again, I'll put that to one side and work on that separately. And then we should be able to get into the rest of the panel in a little easier. I don't want to damage the window frame here. but just trying to get in there at the right angle to be able to get a good hold of it. There we go. Oops. Try this piece here as well. doing it again. I'm moving to the ceiling paper when I should be doing the back panel. Right, get back in there. That was a good feeling. Hold on to just slid forward then. Right, I'm going to just clear a little bit more rubbish. This corner seems to be glued in a lot more tightly than the rest. I've just got a good piece of skirting off there. So I just shut the camera off there for a bit so I could get right in on that back wall. Now the screwdriver wasn't working anymore because you can't get into that wall at the right angle. So I suddenly remembered my miniature chisel set. So I'm using this straight chisel and it's got a little bit of a um, sort of lip at the end there or, or bit at an angle. So with that piece facing forward, I can then use my mini hammer and get behind the wood. So I think again I'm at the wrong angle, but I just wanted to show you how it works on that little final little sort of stubborn piece of panel on that back wall. Let's see if I can get in without blocking your view. So with the little um, angled piece facing forward, just find a little lip and then hammer. So, great little tool. And I'll try it on this side bit as well. I went in a little bit too harsh there. I've cut a bit of a chunk out of the back wall, but I can fill that. 
and I'll use this again sort of around this um, skirting area here, the bits that are sort of stuck to the wall. But let me try this bit of panelling. Seems to be extremely stubborn over this side. Oh my word, that was difficult getting that wood off um, in that corner. Somehow it just seemed to be glued so strongly, um, more so than the rest. So I don't know how that would have happened. Um, I started using the hammer against the screwdriver as well. It's a bit more um, robust than my chisel. And the end of my hammer come off as well. So I'll have to mend that. And I've done a little bit of damage to this wall under here. So I accidentally put the um, end of the screwdriver behind the wood of the wall and that started to come off. So some repair work will need to be done there. But what I'm going to do now is clear um, this mess out and then start removing the floorboards. And then I can just go around with my mini chisel and get rid of any of those little sort of flecks of wood that are stuck around the edges and then that room's done but that took me a lot longer than I thought but then I normally do underestimate time wise so okay let me get this room cleared out okay so I'm back to the small screwdriver and I'm going to make a start now um, on the floor panels let me start over here and I'm thinking these are going to be pretty easy to remove and the reason is because they're actually stuck to card and not directly to the floor I always begin by making a template of the room and then sort of laying the floor in away from the room just off to the template and we'll be doing all that anyway as I sort of start redoing the rooms And I really enjoy doing flooring, especially using the real wood panels. And they come in sheets, self-adhesive sheets, which makes it even easier um, because you can just peel off the backing and stick them to your template. And the sheet they come on um, is sort of laid out very uniformly. So I always split all the strips off and then I'll sort of lay them more randomly I, and I just prefer that look you might like them to look more uniform but I like the random look if I had a longer screwdriver it would be even easier it's just stuck around that little door bit that didn't come off oh here we go let's try and just get under there with my hand actually smell the glue on the cargo. It's just satisfying when things come away in long strips. I'm going to get off as much of this um, cardboard as I can. So I've removed the um, cardboard that came away easily. The rest is completely stuck tight with glue. So I'll remove the rest of this when I remove the wallpaper. Once all of the rooms are sort of to this stage. But I just want to go round once again with my hammer and chisel and just get rid of some of those little bits of wood that are sticking around um, the base there. Okay, so I'm just about done in this room now. I've chiselled all around the edge and where I sort of damaged 
the wall over here. I've chiselled away the loose pieces of wood and then that gives me a better surface to fill. So I'm going to leave this room for now. I'll give it a back out later on um, once all of the rooms are done. And I'm now going to move on to the room above, the blue bedroom. OK, so I'm about to make a start on the blue bedroom. It's times like this I really wish I could split myself in two so I could get twice as much done. Your wish is my command. Where would you like me to start? Great, uh, the red bedroom. Have you got a spare screwdriver? Yeah, they're on the table. Thanks. OK, so I want to make a start again by trying to remove this fireplace around in one piece. And there is a little bit of gap in at the side. I'm going to start by going in there. Carefully does it. Another one saved. And I think I'll start again with the skirting. I'm so glad there's no panelling in this room. <laughs> What I'll actually do is get the chisel there. Have a go with that. Okay, so I can now. I'll just try and see if I can get the path up. <laughs> Very simple. And another salvaged piece. And I aged this because it was bright white um, plaster when I first got it and didn't match the sort of yellow, let me scrub it again, of the fire surround. So I actually just aged it using watercolour paints just so it wasn't so bright white against the yellow of the surround. But that's good because that's a complete set there. Put those in the box. Let's see if we can get behind there. Ooh. used to prop the fire up on I think. Again I'll strip that back, a piece of skirting come with it, strip that back and reuse it. Take out the little bowl, that in there as well. That hammer and chisel way of doing it has come in really handy. So a really good tip there if you're starting out removing wooden fittings. Okay, let's pop the camera around and we'll start on the other side. Start up there again. I don't 
actually like using the uh, chisel tip to pull away because I don't want to break it so that's why I always sort of make the gap and then go in with the screwdriver actually I'll have to take the door off first to remove the door furniture from it as well. So I'll put that in the box. Oh, and the little light fit in as well, which I probably won't reuse. And I can actually see a gap down the edge of this surround, so I think this is going to be an easier one. Not too bad. I do just want to get some of that wood off. I'm really annoyed with myself because where I was using the chisel along here, I wasn't looking at the end, and it's made some gouges into this sort of front edge of the wood. It's fixable, but I should have been more careful, should have been thinking about what I was doing with the chisel. And where I was sort of working as well from the side, I've just taken a little bit too much off of this door frame here. So that's going to have to be fixed. I might even have to replace that piece of wood in there. Okay, let's carry on moving the skirt in. So what I want to do now is actually try to remove this ceiling rose. Yeah, I stopped then to think if that's what I really want to do. But I think if I remember rightly, this light wasn't working properly. So I will, I'll remove it. And the paper started to tear away, so I'd have to repaper anyway. So I will, I'll remove it. And if, again, if I can, I want to try and salvage the ceiling rose. No. And I think that's why it wasn't working properly because there's hardly any wire coming through. The wire looks very frayed. So I would need to replace that anyway. Um, actually, I've got quite a long chain on there, so I can still use this light and I can just scrape back a little bit of the wire to poke up through the hole and just have a shorter chain. And that would probably work better anyway. That is a bit long, actually, thinking about it. Unfortunately, the ceiling rose is a goner. I now want to get into the skirting and the little bit of coving at the back there. So I'm going to bring you round again. So I just realised I wasn't recording, but all I actually did was remove that back piece of skirting board. And I now just want to try and get in there and get that cove in. My camera tripod isn't tall enough to reach into the bedroom, so I've got it stood on a little table and the light. So I'm a bit, I don't want to sort of bash into it as I'm working. Actually, I'll, I'll use the chisel. It's got the thinner blade. In fact, there's actually a gap up here which I filled. Well, that was certainly a lot easier than the living room. Let's clear the mess out. Okay, so now I want to start on the floorboards. I just can't quite believe this room was so easy. I'm just looking around to see if there's anything else 
I need to remove. But no, that was it. So it is just the panel that makes it so difficult. Off so, I can get so I can get in there easier. A piece. If I see a piece sticking up like that, I just can't resist trying to peel it off. Okay. So that's about it as well for this room. And let's go and see how the other Julie's doing in the red bedroom. I've managed to remove the fireplace surround in one piece as well, so that's good. Add that to the box. And I'll start down here. Again with the chisel. I'm just going to see if I can get that half out in one piece. I'm glued in a little bit more substantially than the other one. A bit of chipping at the side, but nothing that can't be repaired, so that's good. Take the little plug out. Let's have a go at this. I'll just grab the bigger screwdriver. seems to be attached a lot more firmly than the other side was. what I've done differently there is put this in before the flooring and on the other ones I'd done the flooring first and then put this in on top so I think that's why this one was trapped a little bit behind this ridge of flooring strange how I did things differently in different rooms This room originally, when I first got the doll's house, was a sort of mirror image of the blue bedroom and I blocked up this door here so that I could have a bathroom in the middle over here and I didn't want sort of two bedroom doors coming into it so it'll kind of look like the blue bedroom has an ensuite and I'll block off this wall at the back here and then the door from this bedroom will lead into the hallway and then into the bathroom and I just thought that made more sense than having do two doors going into the one um, bathroom and that was quite hard work doing that but I'm really gl glad I did 
although on this side, although I did sort of fill and sand, you can still see a little bit of a ridge. So while I'm doing this, I'll sort that out as well. Okay, on to the study. today. Um, so that's four rooms almost done, both bedrooms, living room and study. Um, some of that was pretty tough, especially getting the um, cove in and panel in from those back walls, just really because you can't get in at the right angle. Um, but it's all done now. The next stage is obviously to complete the other rooms to this um, stage. And then I'll go through and remove the wallpaper and the paper that's stuck to the floor. And that will probably be another whole um, video. But in the meantime, I am continuing with the tutorials for the kitchen furniture and miniatures. I'll keep doing those sort of in between. So look out for those and they're in that kitchen playlist. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Try to make it a bit of fun as well with my helper. Hopefully she'll come again another day. <laughs> um, if you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so, as there's lots more to come. I'll be sharing everything I do with my doll's house and all of the tutorials for the furniture and miniatures. So if you liked this episode, you'll like the series. You can find them all in a playlist called My Doll's House Diary. So do go and check those out if you haven't done so already. So for now, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.